Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now it was only yesterday that I did my trip to the local sawmill. So what I did just as an experiment, I just left this on top of my radiator and it's been sat there for 24 hours and I've got a split just on the edge here. I don't think it's really gone in. Uh, one or two little splits appearing on the end here and there's a split on that side there, just really just on this piece here. And looks like it's trying to develop some odd little cracks in the middle here but what i'm going to do i'm going to now just cut this off more of a blank to put on the lathe and see what i can get out of this and really see how much moisture there's still left in it as i turn it down so i've just cut the corners off this on the bandsaw and after i cut it it was still reading about 20 percent on here uh, but that's rapidly disappears now i've hot glued this on to a waste block and i'm going to use my small bowl gouge to start working on the bottom here first of all so the plan is to bring up the size to true it up and put a small mortise on it to put in my other chuck with the slightly smaller jaws and then i can then get it turned around and work on the top So I've just turned the bottom to the shape that I want there. Uh, side still is a little bit rough, so it still needs a bit of work on there. Uh, it's showing up to about 16% moisture content on the bottom here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave this on the lathe until I come out here next. That will give it time, a little bit more time to dry. It's, it's obviously f fairly thin on this top piece now. It's gonna be thicker, in, obviously thicker in the middle here. Right, I've had this sat on the radiator over the top of my radiator for the last probably 24 hours or so and i don't know whether it sh how well it shows up in the camera there but we've got a nice little crack there nice little one there a longer one there a bit on the end there uh, a fairly deepish one this side and a couple of little ones this side uh, that looks like a knot in there the other thing i also found as well that the because the wood has stretched a little bit as well it actually cause the glue block to fail first of all i'm going to give this a coat of sanding cedar because what i want to do is then drop some 
dust and shavings and whatever in there and then pour over some thin CA and the hopefully the uh, sanding sealer will just prevent a, some of the discoloration on the wood when we get the glue on small pieces of dust just try and work them in the cracks and I'm just going to pour thin CA over those now the CA has gone off and hopefully you can see how much this has moved as it's dried so I'm going to just re true this all up and I may have to just like I say just recut the tenon and, and true that all up as well <laughs> camera I've actually took the thickness of this down I just didn't like the foot here being so far up so I've reduced this probably by about 5-10 mil therefore I then had to just refill the some of the cracks again I have then sanded this through the grits up to 600 and just given it a coat of sand and sealer and just just denibbed it with 600 grit paper again so the next process on this is to just do the shaping on the top here now I will say this has been a week since I first started this. Uh, it was last Saturday I actually went to the wood mill and picked up all this wood and the Sunday I'd left this piece of wood on the radiator the Sunday which is where it started to develop the cracks and distort a bit. Did the work on the back there on the Sunday then it's just been sat here for the last five six days. So I'm just going to use my small bowl gouge again just to face this off and do the shaping. Now I've sanded this to 600, uh, given it a coat of sanding sealer and just denibbed it again with a 600. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the top of this with ordinary black matte paint. So I'll just leave that to dry. I mean, that should only take probably about 10, 15 minutes to fully dry on there. Now, it's been left for a while to dry, and I really like it because the grain shows on here. Now I've dug out my Joe Sonja paints again, iridescent ones. I've gone for a red, uh, a gold, and a green. And I've just watered them down with the flow medium from Joe Sonja as well. Now, you may well have seen me do this before, and certainly other people do this before. I'm using the string pull effect on these i've found that wool seems to work really well on these because it's soft and it gets the shape that you want so i've just soaked a piece of wool here in the paint if i can just straighten it out and i will lay this 
down and I'm going to push it down fairly so that it grabs and the idea is to gently pull these down on the bottom there and hopefully the camera's picking up on that you can really see the red in there already so I'm just going to let that dry off a bit because it's thin like that it should dry off fairly quickly now the gold I want to lay overlay this slightly different and again I'm just going to push this down because it then grabs hold of the work keep the string down low as you pull it I think what I'm going to do is I've gone back to the red again I'm going to do another overlay on the front just a little bit smaller Now for the green, I'm really going to use this more as a border. And I've picked a piece of string here, a thickish piece of string. It's one of those sort of like garden style strings with all the fuzzy bits sticking out the side. Um, so it's not so finely woven as like a wool. And rather than going via the end, I've got the ends in my hand here. I'm going to sink the middle of this in because the idea is I want to drag this like this to create like a grass effect now that is on there quite thick and the idea here is to Grab this on the sides now it does look a little bit messy but I'm going to let that dry off as it is now, this is fully dried uh, it's turned out better than I thought it was going to while it was still wet and I just want to finish this off now by probably putting one or two border lines on the rim here just to break up the, the green paint a bit chuck now so all I'm going to do now is just going to give that a spray lacquer finish just to finish it off with this is the finished item all I've done on here is given this about two or three coats of spray lacquer on the top when I was doing the painting I was wasn't quite sure about the flower uh, how well this is coming through with especially doing with sort of like three layers uh, with the two colors and I think the main problem was was because when the paint is wet it looks very white and 
so therefore it didn't really show up very well and the same goes really for the green when i put that on there was so much white on there and i thought it was going to stay like that a lot of it because of it being so thick and i'm still not overly enthusiastic about it but it is slowly growing on me and it's when you look at it more closely if you look at it from a distance it, the green does look a little bit messy but when you probably concentrate on it a bit more it it looks more of a border with the grasses around it which is what i was trying to get now i think the two lines that i've cut in there as well are, are quite important because it does just break it up a little bit uh, whether i just needed to put the green around the bottom half and it would look better or just le left it as black i don't know whether it would have improved it or not however the real point of this whole project was to really just show as a demonstration again is that it's sunday today and it was last saturday week so it was a week ago yesterday that i bought all the wood from the sawmill and i started off with a piece of slab of oak a bit like that and that day that i bought it on the saturday i laid this on top of my radiator in the shed here for 24 hours really started the drying process on it straight away but it was quite surprising because even though it was showing as being dry on the outside from the radiator with so much heat on it inside it was still very very wet now all i've done on the back here so far has given it sort of a couple of coats of sanding sealer and it's all sanded at 600 grit and and it does look like a finish on itself so hopefully this is showing as another example that you can start off with a piece of what really is very very wet wood you can develop cracks in it um, you can dry it fairly quickly in your own heat source thanks a lot for watching